From advertising to software as a service to data. Across all of our programs and clients, we've seen a 55 to 65 percent open rate. Getting brands authentically integrated into content performs better than TV advertising. Typical lifespan of an article is about 24 to 36 hours. If we're reaching out to the right person with the right message and a clear call to action, then it's just a matter of timing. Welcome to the MarTech Podcast, a member of the I Hear Everything Podcast Network. In this podcast, you'll hear the stories of world-class marketers that use technology to drive business results and achieve career success. Here's the host of the MarTech Podcast, Benjamin Shapiro. Welcome to the MarTech Podcast. I'm your host, Benjamin Shapiro, and today we're going to discuss omni-channel marketing. Joining us is Jason Lyman, who is the CMO of Customer I.O., which is a customer engagement platform designed for marketing teams to create data-driven campaigns that reach people across all messaging channels at the right times. And today, Jason and I are going to discuss how to navigate the challenges of the omni-channel landscape. All right, here's the first part of my conversation with Jason Lyman, the CMO of Customer I.O. Jason, welcome to the MarTech Podcast. Ben, thanks for having me. Excited to have you here. Excited that you're gracing us with your presence to do your first ever podcast. Very thrilled you accepted our invite to join the show. And I'd love to hear a little bit about Customer I.O. and how you're thinking about the omni-channel landscape. Let's start off. Give me the 10,000 foot view. What is Customer I.O.? So Customer I.O. is a customer engagement platform, and we support a variety of different marketing channels. And we provide automation to help you reach your, your customers in a variety of different ways to drive impact. So we're really optimized for those teams that take a more data-driven approach to how they think about marketing. And that data allows them to create personalized customer journeys that help engagement and drive conversion. And we are a very flexible platform. So it allows you to customize whatever you need to do to kind of help meet your needs. And so we really believe that we can deliver meaningful interactions using your data to help you really drive impact within your business. So whenever I hear customer engagement platform, my head goes to aggregating disparate data sources, figuring out what is a trigger for something that needs to have a marketing communication and figuring out whether that should be email, SMS, in-app, some sort of other delivery method. Am I kind of on the right track here with what customer engagement means to you? Absolutely. I mean, in the end, consumers today, they have different preferences in regards to how companies or brands communicate with them. And so having a kind of centralized platform that allows you to build those journeys in a really interesting and unique way that helps facilitate orchestration through these different channels is really how you can kind of break through the noise and drive action and impact. And so Customer.io is really provides you with those tools that you need to build those sophisticated journeys in an easy way. That's where we've tended to see the most success with our customer base. So as a marketer, this sounds like a lot of green grass, blue ocean, a million opportunities to take God knows what type of business you're running. But let's just take the example of some sort of an omni-channel e-commerce company. You're getting your online website data. You're getting your in-store foot traffic data. You're getting God knows what else sending into this system telling you that this customer, which we may or may not have a record for, had these types of activities or worked with this type of marketing activity. And now we have to figure out how to engage them and get them the right product at the right place at the right time. That sounds like there's an incredible amount of, well, how should we test this and where do we start? When you think about this omni-channel marketing landscape and you've got all of this blue ocean around you for how you can build a customer journey, Where do you start? How do you think about the segmentation of the omni-channel landscape? I think for me, it's really important to start with the customer and work backwards. And so rather than try to be overly sophisticated or try to do too much, I think it's important to kind of look at your customer base, figure out what are the like core pain points that they're facing, pick the one that feels the most prevalent and the most actionable, and then work back from there. So starting to think through, how do you measure that pain point? Is that data that we are able to capture? 
if I have that data point available to trigger campaigns to that customer, what is the right strategy that I want to use? And breaking that strategy down, what would be the right messaging? And then what would be the right channels to deliver that messaging? I think it's important to honestly start small and then iterate fast. I think that a lot of times people can get bogged down in the details. So I found that by keeping the scope relatively tight as you begin to take on a project like this, it in turn allows you to learn really quickly. And that will open up new opportunities and you can kind of build from there. I like that. Start with your customer pain points start small, iterate fast. So what do we know about our customers? What do we think might help them move the right direction? And then there has to be some sort of evaluation chain to understand what the feedback loop is. Talk to me about the teams that are mastering omni-channel marketing. What are some examples of people that are using the type of engagement platform like Customer IO and doing a really good job? For our solution in particular, we've seen a lot of traction with companies that have some type of application or have a website where they're able to capture a lot of customer activity. So we've seen a lot of success with companies that have a SaaS application for companies that are a marketplace or people in the fintech and edtech space. In the end, I think that first-party data is going to be more and more important for organizations. And so those companies that are already collecting a lot of that data and then are able to seamlessly connect that data to customer IO, be able to understand how to leverage that data in the building of journeys and in the segmentation helps facilitate the power of our omni-channel communication platform. In most organizations, when you have these types of engagement platforms that I think of as like a middle layer between your data infrastructure and let's call it your outreach, your syndication of messaging, who traditionally owns the responsibility for integrating these types of platforms? Is there a omni-channel team? Is there an engagement team? Is this just CMO and marketing ops? Who's responsible? I think it depends on the company size, to really be honest. I think the smaller that your company is, the more that you probably have to lean on your engineering team, at least initially, to to get things integrated, get that data ingested. And then as your marketing team starts to mature, a lot of that insight might exist on your marketing ops function. And then as far as like how you then engage or action off of that data, a lot of that really centers in the marketing team itself, whether you call it a growth team or a lifecycle team, But we've also seen product growth teams see a lot of success in using our platform, especially because a lot of the core use cases around activation, onboarding, retention, cross-sell and upsell, those are all things that when powered by data can be much more effective than kind of a more spray and pray type of approach or one where it's pretty consistent for your customers that come in versus we found that if you can use a more segmented approach and have more customized journeys, that can deliver more impact in those various use cases. In my rambling example before, I used the e-commerce example because in my head, companies that have a lot of data, companies that have a lot of SKUs where you have to figure out matching product to person with timing, seasonality, like that's where these customer engagement platforms just in my head feel like a great fit. Talking about the industries that specifically get value out of customer engagement platforms. I think when you have customers that go through a similar process to onboard onto a solution or onto a product, that was where there's a lot of potential. Because in the end, it's really hard to acquire customers, whether it's for your SaaS app, whether it's for some type of financial product, whether it's for a marketplace, you need to be thinking about how do you prevent leakiness in the funnel and be able to move them through these standard steps that every prospect or every customer needs to go through to get activated. So I think in the end, if your company is operating in that way, then there's a lot of potential for that customer engagement solution to really drive impact. Because in a lot of cases, there's standard steps that that person needs to complete in order to truly adopt or embrace that new product. 
So you can then structure different journeys to push people in that direction. And that's where the data component is really, really important because you're using the actions that a prospect or a customer are taking to trigger the type of journey that you want them to go on or you can optimize the CTAs or the support or the resources that you provide. That's the lens at which I kind of look at the customer segments where a solution like ours can be extremely valuable. And in turn, that could be a SaaS app, that could be an ed tech solution, that could be a marketplace, that could be some type of financial fintech product. So that's where we see a lot of synergy and a lot of opportunity. So when you think about the communication channels, and by that, I mean, you know, you can have SMS and email and in app, there's all sorts of other types of marketing channels, all of your performance marketing, your Googles, your metas and TikToks of the world. How are you seeing brands that are trying to take this multi touch point, like embrace and surround the customer approach in a thoughtful way? Like, tell me more about the omni channel landscape and what's working today. I think one is you need to be opinionated around what each channel does best. So just to put that in practice, right? SMS is great around driving visibility around something that's important and that can kind of drive action versus something that is, you know, a push notification. It's much more contextual and kind of drive more specificity when you know you have them in your product or in your application. Versus email might be better optimized for creating broader awareness or understanding around some key message that is more maybe at the beginning of a journey or is something that uses to get them back engaged again. So I think that you need to one, be opinionated around how each of the channels drive the best ROI or the best action in whatever campaign that you're building. I think the second thing is making sure that you have enough variety built in. So realizing that you can't just over rotate towards one of those channels and lean too heavily on it. It's the diversity of different touch points is what really drives the impact. To kind of make that be a little bit more clear, last year, we released the state of messaging report. And as part of that, we looked at the effectiveness of different campaign types. And what we found was that a shift from just a single channel to a multi-channel campaign improved performance by 63%. And if you start to layer in more channels, so for instance, email push and SMS was 913% more effective than just using email alone. So it's important to kind of think about the interconnectivity and how those things work together to really drive impact. So I think those are two ways to kind of think about that. 900% more effective sounds like an incredible number. Is that because marketers that are using email, push and SMS are sending more communication across multiple channels? Are you normalizing saying same amount of messaging, just multi channel? Yeah, it's same amount of messaging multi channel. If you think about, I know, I just I go back to like old adages where you need enough impressions to drive actions. If you're hitting the same message through the same channel, it gets ignored and doesn't really drive that action. Versus if you have it touch in multiple places, that's where the retention, that's where the recognition really comes. And that in turn is what drives the kind of action that you're looking for. The thing that occurs to me is that your messaging strategy has to be diverse. Understanding who your customers are, understanding the purpose of each of the channel. As Jason said, you have to understand that SMS is meant for immediacy. Email is asynchronous. In-app can be very effective, but it's situational. You have to understand not only who you're talking to, but what are the channels that are going to resonate with them. And if you get that mix right, and if you're going to understand what the customer needs and when they need it and which channel they want to receive the message from, it can help not only from a performance perspective, it builds the brand. It builds that thought of, God, I've seen this company and they've engaged me in a positive fashion, all sorts of different places. Not just, geez, this company hammers me with emails all of the time. You get that feeling of omnipresence through your omni-channel marketing. And that wraps up this episode of the MarTech Podcast. Thanks for listening to my conversation with Jason Lyman, the CMO of Customer.io. Join us again tomorrow when Jason and I continue our conversation talking about how data is reshaping omni-channel marketing. 
If you can't wait until our next episode and you'd like to learn more about Jason, you can find a link to his LinkedIn profile in our show notes. You can contact him on Twitter where his handle is Jason Lyman. That's J-A-S-O-N-L-Y-M-A-N. Or you can visit his company's website, which is customer.io. Just one more link in our show notes I'd like to tell you about. If you didn't have a chance to take notes while you were listening to this podcast, head over to martechpod.com where we have summaries of all of our episodes and contact information for our guests. You can also subscribe to our weekly newsletter or you can apply to be the next guest speaker on the MarTech Podcast. Of course, you can always reach out on social media. Our handle is martechpod, M-A-R-T-E-C-H-P-O-D on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, or you can contact me directly on LinkedIn. My handle is Ben J. Shap, B-E-N-J-S-H-A. And if you haven't subscribed yet and you want a daily stream of marketing and technology knowledge in your podcast feed, we're going to publish an episode every day this year. So hit the subscribe button in your podcast app and we'll be back in your feed tomorrow morning. All right, that's it for today. But until next time, my advice is to just focus on keeping your customers happy.